Hello everyone, this is Darwolf20, and welcome to a brand new mod spotlight. Today, taking a look at Just Dire Things. A new mod by me, Darwolf20. Uh, hey, Just Dire Things is, it started out as a collection of just miscellaneous random things that I wanted to have in the game. Um, and then it just kind of snowballed a little bit, and I was having so much fun adding new features and items. Uh, it's not even close to done. Uh, I've got at least twice as much content planned as is currently available in the mod. That said, uh, I, I feel like now it's pretty stable enough that I can put it uh, out there for you guys to try out. So this is currently in beta, available on CurseForge. Uh, I'll put the link to the mod in the description of this video, and this spotlight will teach you all about it and how to use it. Uh, it adds a bunch of blocks, a bunch of machines, uh, a bunch of resources, a new resource crafting mechanic, uh, a, a couple cool gadgets and items, and a whole set of tools that you can kind of see on the screen here, each of which uh, have neat abilities attached to them. Um, so a, a bunch of cool stuff to play with. Um, I tried to put a spin on some common favorite things, so I'll talk about what that is as we kind of go through. Uh, and then other things are just kind of like, they're, they're, they were, there were things you could do before, but I they weren't exactly the way I wanted them to work. So I'm like, well, I'm going to put my own spin on how it works. And you'll see what that looks like uh, as we go through some of this stuff. So without further ado, let's take a look at Just Dire Things. So the first thing to talk about in Just Dire Things is the resource mechanic. Uh, how do you get resources from Just Dire Things? Pretty much everything is going to be made from these goo blocks. There are four tiers, Primogel goo, Blaze Bloom goo, uh, Void Shimmer goo, and Shadow Pulse goo. And the basic gist, or the, the concept of how these work, is the goo will consume other resources um, and then leave behind some waste products that wind up uh, being used for crafting. So let's demonstrate how the first tier of goo works. Uh, the Primogel goo is made very simply with some basic overworld materials. You're going to need some clay and rotten flesh and dirt, and when you craft that up, you're going to get yourself the Primogel goo. So let's go ahead and place that in the world. It'll just kind of sit there doing its own thing. Now as a crafting mechanic, you just place blocks next to it. The only thing that you can craft with prim Primogel goo uh, is going to be uh, blocks of iron can turn into raw ferricore ore, and then blocks of coal can turn into raw primal coal. And you're going to need uh, higher tiers of goo to get other stuff in the future. So let's go ahead and see how this works. We can simply place a block of iron next to the primogel goo. And what's going to happen is the goo will start to slowly consume the block next to it. Uh, we'll place another block over here, and we could probably even get a block of coal to demonstrate that one. And we'll talk about the coal resource in a little bit. But you'll see the primal gel goo is kind of consuming it slowly but surely. And it will take, you know, a little time. Uh, this is not a super fast mechanic. At least not yet. Of course, you know Dyer, he gets impatient for things, so it can definitely be sped up in the future. Uh, so the Primal Jelgu will uh, slowly but surely eat this up, and then eventually it will consume it and leave behind some waste material. Let's wait a little bit and see what that looks like. All right, so it looks like the goo has almost completely consumed these two blocks. And once it is done consuming, it will kind of dissolve uh, and, and return back to its original place, leaving behind some waste products. Boom. That one is done. And we can kind of take a look at this here. Uh, now, some of the textures are not completely done yet. Um, I've, I've got Red doing some awesome looking textures for me. These uh, raw ferrocore ones are complete. The coal ones are not. They are just kind of, thing, like, that's temporary. That one's 100% temporary. Uh, and then you can go ahead and mine these things using any tool. Um, so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So I've got my ferrocore ore pickaxe here. I should probably be using a vanilla pickaxe because technically you wouldn't have ferrocore just yet. You could even just use a regular old iron pickaxe if you wanted to. Cool. Now you'll note that I got four raw ferrocore from that. And this one I got three raw ferrocore from. Here's the rule with this stuff. You always get between three or four resources. Fortune does not matter. You will not get extra resources from fortune. This is basically a crafting mechanic. So it's, it's saying you need nine ingots and you'll get three to four of the next of the raw ferrocore, right? And and fortune is not a thing. So sorry, no fortune for you. Um, so we can go ahead and you know break that raw ferrocore ore here and get some of that. We happen to get three, and then we'll break this guy, and we got a little bit of primal coal, which we'll talk about in a moment. 
So that's the crafting mechanic. Now, once you've gone ahead and uh, explored the nether, you'll be able to get yourself blaze bloom goo. So you can take your existing primogel goo or make a new one and upgrade it using blaze powder and nether wart. From there, you're gonna have to head out to the end and visit uh, some end cities to get some shulker shells and chorus fruit. Uh, and that will get you access to the void shimmer goo. And then finally, you're gonna have to go down and face the warden to get yourself access to the shadow pulse goo. All of these lead to further resources that we'll be exploring throughout the spotlight. However, for now, let's take a look at what you can do with your Ferrocore. Ferrocore can be smelted straight up into Ferrocore ingots. Easy peasy. So just grab yourself a furnace, throw in some fuel, and cook up some Ferrocore. Oh man, I hate the fact that whenever you burn fuel in a furnace, it completely consumes it, whether you needed to smelt all that. See, I wasted a whole block of coal there. So if only there was a better way. Haha, <laughs> Just Dire Things introduces a better way, courtesy of one of the first items you'll get access to, which is the fuel canister. The fuel canister is four pieces of ferrocore around a piece of coal, and all you can do with that is place resources in it, specifically resources that consume or are fuel. Uh, so let's take a look. If I were to throw some coal in there, you'll notice that if I look at coal or if I look at, you know, uh, oak planks or sticks, you can see on the tooltip, these are things that can be used as furnace fuel. So pretty much anything that's red at the moment can't be used as a furnace fuel. Pretty neat, right? Uh, and when you mouse over items in this UI, it'll tell you the fuel amount, which is basically how many items uh, this thing can smelt, or the stack fuel amount, how many items this entire stack can smelt. So you'll notice that if there's just two items there, the stack fuel amount is 16 because there's two pieces of coal. Also, if you hold shift, you can see the cook time, which is behind the scenes how Minecraft tracks this. Uh, so the cook time for uh, coal is 1600 ticks. And those of you good at math can figure out that in general, it takes about 200 ticks uh, to smelt a resource. Uh, you'll notice that sticks have a half uh, of a fuel amount. So as we all know, you need two sticks to smelt something. Um, you know, oak planks can do about one and a half things and blocks of coal can smelt 80. Now, when you place uh, the resource in here and be careful because you won't be able to get it back. Once it's in there, it's in a fuel mixture that you can't access again. But when you do that, you'll notice that the fuel canister now has that fuel amount stored on it. Now we can come over here. I'm gonna go ahead and break this furnace and replace it in the world. You can use your fuel canister as a fuel source in the vanilla furnace, as well as most other modded burners, right? Anything that can burn resources, this should work in. Um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and place my raw ferrocore in there. And you'll see what it did is it consumed one of the fuel out of the fuel canister. And it's gonna burn just enough to use up one piece of fuel. So this is basically my version of tiny coal. I like tiny coal, but I also hate the fact that with tiny coal, you have to constantly refill your furnace. So no more is that a problem, right? I can take this out of there and we can see it's done smelting. And now you can go ahead and throw, I don't know, a whole bunch of blocks of coal in there. Just throw a ton of, ton of, ton of fuel in there. It's all good. Um, and now, now I can smelt 5,469 items with, uh, with this fuel canister. Uh, how cool is that? And there won't be any waste. You won't waste any fuel at all because uh, it'll only use one burn per operation. Pretty slick. Ferrocore also gives you access to the first tier of tools. And as you can see, there's one of each type, except for the brand new mace because, yeah, that's super new. And this is 1.20.4, but, you know, I'll probably add maces, I guess, because that's a new thing. Uh, so each one of these uh, tools is crafted in exactly the way you might expect. Uh, and the neat thing about these tools is they all have different abilities on them. Uh, and each tier of tool has more and more abilities. So let's take a look at the very first one that I'm going to show you, which is the Ferrocore Pickaxe. The Ferrocore Pickaxe works like a pickaxe as you might expect. However, it has a few special abilities. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how the abilities work for almost all the tools. So pretty much every tool is gonna to work as shown. First off, if you hold shift over the tool, you'll be able to see a list of abilities that it has. It also tells you whether or not the tool is enabled. And there's a hotkey, which you can obviously change in your, in your, in your key binding screen, uh, to toggle on and off the tool. And when you turn it off, they'll lose their shimmer and shine. 
right? So if the tools are disabled, they're no longer glowing and active, but when you turn them back on, they'll kind of glow a little bit, letting you know that they are now activated um, and their abilities are on. Now, each ability can be turned off individually by shift right clicking on the tool. So for example, the Ferrocore pickaxe has two abilities. It has ore miner and ore scanner. Let's see how these work. Ore miner is basically a vein miner, but only for ores, okay? So it won't work on blocks. So there is no vein mining of blocks except if they are ores. If they are ores, when you mine, you'll notice it takes a little bit longer to mine the block that you're on. However, that's to account for the fact that you just mined nine blocks all at once. So it's basically a vein miner. Now, if you don't like that ability, you can just turn it off individually by clicking on it. So there, ore miner turned off. Now, when we go to mine, it works like normal. However, you can turn it back on and you'll see that it's back on. Now, if you want, you can turn off all abilities all at once, and that will just make the tool work like a normal pickaxe. One of my personal pet peeves is when you get these fancy cool tools that do all these fancy things, but then like you use it to go mine, and then when you go back to your base and you just wanna like, you know, mine like normal, you have to go get a different tool because you can't turn on and off the abilities real easy. I want tools that you can turn on and off the abilities very easy by just toggling uh, with a hotkey. Um, now, you'll also notice that, you know, you can turn off the ore miner ability and that'll be saved whether the thing is on or off. So, you know, it doesn't matter. When the, when the tool is disabled, all abilities are off no matter what. And then when the tool is enabled, only the active abilities on this UI are visible and, and functional. Sound cool? Now for the second ability we have, uh, that I've been saving this one, is the ore scanner. The ore scanner will highlight in the world different ores relatively close by. It doesn't have a huge range, but I mean, it's pretty good. Now there's no good way to figure out uh, exactly what ores are what until you start digging down and look. So we see there's some more down there. I have no idea what it is. Let's go find out. Oh, it's copper, cool. And then I can kind of vein mine it. Oh, look, there's coal there too. Sweet. Man, that must be a large coal vein because look how long it's taken to mine it. That must be a really large coal vein. Holy cow. Oh, there we go. Yeah, no, I got like 19 pieces of coal out of that. So, uh-huh, definitely, definitely a big one. So those are the first abilities uh, on the Ferrocore pickaxe. Pretty spiffy. Now you'll start to notice a pattern with some of these things because uh, each tier of ability kind of has a theme to it. The second uh, tool we'll take a look at is the Ferrocore Sword. And this one just has one ability. It's called Mob Scanner. And as you can probably guess, uh, it will be able to find nearby mobs. So let's go ahead and get some zombies and we better turn off peaceful mode, which I usually have on for my spotlights. And as you might expect, right click the Ferrocore Sword and you'll see some particles indicating where nearby monsters are. Now you'll note that using these abilities absolutely does cost durability. Uh, let's see, if we turn on advanced tooltips, you'll note that simply right clicking that mob scanner used up 10 durability on my sword. Click it again, it'll use another 10. So these abilities are not free, they do come with a cost. There you go. And uh, same deal with the Ferrocore pickaxe. 417 durability, right click, 407 durability. Make sure to toggle off the ore scanner and the mob scanner if you don't wanna accidentally click them. Or also, like I said, if you want, you can just disable the tools altogether. And now when you right click, nothing happens. Cool. The Ferrocore shovel has two abilities. First, lawnmower. Second, sky sweeper. Let's take a look. Lawnmower, when you right click, with the tool active, of course. We'll basically knock down any tall grass and stuff. Dyer's always kind of hated tall grass, maybe because I've been playing Minecraft since before. Today. So it'll just it'll just knock those things on the ground for you and help and help mow your lawn, if you will. Uh, Sky Sweeper is a slightly different ability. What this one does is it will automatically clear any blocks that you're mining that would normally fall on your head, like so. So with the um, Following turned off, so if we turn off the tool, this is normal behavior for mining things like sand or gravel. With Sky Sweeper on, any blocks in a column above will automatically be cleared out uh, up to, what did I make it, 16, 64, I forget, something like that. 
So if you're, you know, mining sand, it'll automatically clear above for you. Easy peasy. Uh, so that is the Sky Sweeper and ability. So next up, let's take a look at the Ferrocore Axe, which I'm sure you can probably guess. There's actually two of them, Tree Feller and Leaf Breaker. Uh, the Tree Feller does exactly what you can probably assume. Now this is a pretty large tree and the same rules apply with the Pickaxe. It will automatically harvest all adjacently connected logs. So a single break and then boom, all the logs have fallen. Now right clicking a leaf will automatically apply the Leaf Breaker ability and break all leaves up to a certain extent. Again, I think I made it about 64. So again, just right clicking on the leaves here will you know, cause it to clear a large area of leaves for you. Obviously, a lot of mod packs have like the fast leaf decay thing on it. So yeah, you know, it's its value is up to is up to you guys whether you think it's good or not. Pretty handy. And then finally, we've got the Ferrocore hoe. Now, hoes are, hoes are a little bit different. Um, they can be toggled on and off with their abilities, but they don't have any uh, anything in here because right now hoes only do one thing, and that is to give you access to a new tier of farmland. Now there's four tiers of farmland, which we'll be getting into, uh, but let's go ahead and get ourselves a nice bucket of water to demonstrate how this works. So there you go. So normal farmland, personal pet peeve of mine, jumping on it. Oh no, it turned back into dirt. I hate that. Let's activate our tool here and take a look at tier one primogel soil. The first ability on primogel soil is no breaking from jumping. Mobs, players, what have you. Yeah, just just no. Thanks, I'm good. We don't need that. Now, just like normal soil, it does need to be uh, saturated with water. If you do get rid of the water, it'll eventually turn back into dirt. Uh, when you break it with a shovel, it's going to turn into dirt. All the standard mechanics of soil, uh, except for the fact that it can't be harmed. Now, that said, primal gel soil does have a slight bonus to growth speed. So when you plant uh, seeds on it, for example, they're going to grow just a little bit faster than normal. In addition, uh, you can also go ahead, uh, just as a little extra bonus, throw sugarcane and cactus on there. But do note, sugarcane and cactus have their standard um, placement rules that have applied to them. So, you know, no doing that, right? But you can totally plant sugarcane and cactus on these guys, and it works pretty well. And again, you'll get minor growth tick uh, speed increases. So keep that in mind. The next tool I'd like to show you, and it's not really a tool tool, but it's a nifty little gadget, and that is the pocket generator. Now there are four tiers of these. Uh, each of them basically run faster. So the first tier of pocket generator is made using, you probably guessed it, ferrocore ingots. The pocket generator burns fuels, uh, and it can also work with your fuel canister, of course. And what it'll do is it'll consume fuel from the fuel canister, charge up an internal energy buffer, and then charge up any items or tools that you want. Again, this can be activated with pressing V. So when you activate with the hotkey, you'll see it kind of building up some forge energy here. You can see it storing that. It's burning through the fuel. Again, you don't have to use the fuel canister. You can use regular old coal. I'm not sure why you would, but you know, you do you. And you'll see how much burn time remains uh, on, the, on the screen here. Now, what it'll also do is fill up any forge energy um, items in your inventory with power. So you'll note when I pick up my building gadget, it starts filling up with energy draining out of the pocket generator. Um, the amount of uh, RF that or forge energy that you get um, is configurable. The speed at which it burns is configurable. There's a bunch of config options for a lot of different things. Um, and I'll add more as needed or requested. So the pocket generator is a nice way to, to keep some items powered up in your inventory as you're playing uh, until you get to the point where you can you know, have batteries or some other mod that adds wireless charging of items. But for now, you can just you know, use some coal to power up whatever gadgets you got. Now, uh, one thing I haven't told you guys about just yet is the primal coal. Now, as you guys saw, when we broke our uh, raw primal coal block, we happened to get four coal. Uh, again, you get anywhere from three to four items from this drop. So that time I happened to get three. So somewhere between three and four items. And as a reminder, in order to make this, you need a full block of coal. So nine pieces of coal goes in, three to four pieces of primal coal comes out. What does primal coal do? Well, it's basically a consolidated version of coal. You'll notice that a single piece of primal coal can smelt 24 items. 
Um, it has some better uses in the future as well, uh, and a few other things I have planned to do with it. But for now, it's basically a consolidated version of coal. Now that said, if you get three pieces from the break, you've broken even. If you get four pieces from the break, you get a little bit more. So on average, you'll get about three and a half times as much fuel out of this crafting method as you put into it. So a little bit better than breaking even. Um, so the primal coal can be used basically as a consolidated fuel source. Um, and there's higher tiers of primal coal, as you can see in JEI, that will uh, basically uh, be higher and higher. So um, blaze ember coal, for example, is the tier two version of it. Each piece can smelt 72 items. Uh, and what that is, is uh, the, the 24 times three. So you need a block of primal coal to get blaze ember. So the same, same math applies, right? Uh, if you happen to get three blaze embers, you've broken even. If you happen to get four, you got a little bit lucky and, and you wind up with a little bit more fuel. So speaking of blaze, maybe now is a good time to look at the blaze bloom goo. Uh, this stuff is the tier two version of goo. Uh, this thing can uh, do everything the tier one version can do. So it can still do uh, blocks of iron. And you'll also note that it does blocks of iron a little bit faster than the tier one version. Like I said, you can do things a little bit quicker. Yeah, so Blaze Bloom Goo uh, definitely transforms its stuff a little bit faster. Now, the uh, the bonus with ba Blaze Bloom Goo is it can also do gold uh, and, and convert gold. Uh, so tier two Goo can do tier two recipes. And all these recipes are data, by the way, uh, the, the data stuff in Minecraft. So what that means is mod pack makers, if they wish, can use this recipe type for their own things. So if some pack maker somewhere decided they wanted to uh, make it so that you have other recipes and other crafting ability with these goos, uh, you're absolutely gonna be allowed to do that. Pretty, pretty doable. Uh, so you'll note here the blaze bloom goo, obviously much faster than the tier one goo. Uh, it's, it's converted these blocks pretty quickly and it will soon uh, give us our new items. Pretty cool. And what we have here is raw blaze gold ore. Now the pattern here is about the same as you're used to. You can get a chance of either three or four blaze gold ore. So remember, you have to put in nine ingots of gold and you'll get somewhere between three and four blaze gold. And just like you might expect, you smelt that up in your smeltery there and you're good to go. Go ahead and toss some coal in there and let that thing smelt. Nice. Uh, raw blaze gold turns into blaze gold ingots, which gives you its own set of tools and abilities. And there's also some machines and stuff that we haven't even gotten to just yet, but we'll get there soon enough. So let's take a look at the tier two tools that are available with blaze gold. Uh, so first off, there's a tier two pocket generator, which uh, as you've probably guessed by now, just runs a little bit faster. Let's compare the two of them. Uh, so if we were to put a piece of coal in here, you'll notice that when I activate it, it's going to run for about 40 seconds. Um, and, and at the end of the day, it'll produce the exact same amount as the blazing pocket generator, which it can run in about 15 seconds. So the blazing pocket generator, clearly a lot faster uh, of, a, of a generator, and it'll burn through its fuel a lot quicker. And on average, these guys produce about 24,000 um, forge energy per piece of coal that you place in there. Right? And obviously placing primal coal or something else would, would produce more. Um, so this guy's still running, but like I promised, he'll produce the exact same amount. So you don't get more energy out of your coal with the higher tier generators, but they do run a lot quicker. Uh, so they can produce more forge energy per tick. Now let's take a look at all of our tools. These guys all come with a new set of abilities uh, in addition to all the previous ones. So every tool has the same abilities as the previous tier with a few new ones. Let's take a look. So the pickaxe, again, you can disable the whole thing with a hotkey and it completely turns off the abilities. Two new abilities on the pickaxe. First off is auto smelter and second off is hammer mode. So the pickaxe has a hammer uh, and it can work in a three by three. Let's turn off auto smelter. You can probably guess what it is, but as you're looking at blocks, it'll work in a three by three. So if I do this, it's gonna mine these four. If I hit the center one here, boom, it mines all of the center ones. Now, just as we had before, you can also do uh, the, the ore vein miner. So that works just as you might expect. And obviously, if you guessed auto smelter will automatically smelt blocks for you, you were 1000% correct. The auto smelter will automatically smelt blocks. Now, it should be noted that um, there is a durability cost to doing this. So if we place down two of these 
and we place down two of these. One, two, used two durability. One, two, used four durability. So it's one durability cost per item smelted. So if you smelt 64 items with it, it's going to cost 64 more durability. Keep that in mind. So the Blaze Gold Pickaxe, it's also a lot quicker. It mines at about the same speed as gold. So we all know gold is a little bit of a quicker mining operation there. Uh, so that works just fine. If you don't like the idea of auto smelting, turn it off. That's fine. That's cool. You're around your base. You don't want to do auto smelting. No problem. Oh, that's right. I am at my base. Maybe I should turn off the abilities altogether so that uh, I just mine like normal. But oh, I'm out mining again. Turn hammer back on with a hotkey. See how quick and easy that is? Super cool, right? Same with auto smelting. Hey, we just want to be able to smelt some stuff. There you go. And just like with the other abilities, you'll note that uh, mining a three by three versus mining just one takes a little bit longer, right? Uh, because same as we were saying before. And smelted cobblestone turns into stone. Now that said, keep in mind, when you break stone, it turns into cobblestone and then it smelts it back into stone. Okay, if you want to get uh, smooth stone out of this, you would be correct to assume that you can put silk touch on the dude. So if we go ahead and attach silk touch to our blaze pickaxe right here, after I give myself 50 levels of experience for that purpose. Cool. Now we do this and you'll see that it's giving me smooth stone. Okay. so. Whatever item drops from the block gets smelted by the tool, which means that if it dropped cobble, it will give you stone. And if it drops stone, it will give you smooth stone. So if you want to make smooth stone, you got to self-touch your pickaxe. Also, uh, it does work with fortune. So if you got yourself uh, a blaze gold pickaxe and threw some fortune on there, like fortune three, you'll notice that we got more than one iron ingot. Pretty cool, not too shabby. There we go, we got three iron ingots from that. So uh, regular enchanting rules apply. Good times, right? Now for the shovel, uh, same deal applies. You've got the same abilities as before, lawn mower and sky sweeper, and now we have auto smelter and hammer. Uh, so hammer mode will shovel in a three by three area as expected, and auto smelter will do exactly what you probably expect it to do, uh, make sand into glass. Again, at the cost of durability. How about the blaze gold axe, I hear you asking? Auto smelt, of course. Can turn those oak logs straight into charcoal. Woohoo! Uh, now, finally, we've got the blaze gold sword. Now, in fairness, I haven't come up with a good ability for the swords just yet. Some of them just really don't do anything too fancy. Uh, I want to do something with this, and I'm still working out what that will be. I don't want it to light the mobs on fire, because A, I hate the flame enchant anyway, because usually when I kill Endermen, it just makes them teleport all over the place, and that's annoying. And also, B, you can just get that with a regular enchant. So like it being an ability doesn't make sense to me. Um, so I'm going to come up with something here. Uh, one concept I have is maybe the heat from the sword will uh, drain heat and absorb the heat out of your enemies, giving them a slowing debuff or something along those lines. Uh, so no special ability on that. Now that said, the Blaze Gold Hoe, on the other hand, gives you tier two Blaze Bloom Soil. Now this stuff is interesting, I will say. Um, it is encouraging you to use one of the blocks that I added to the mod. Um, so let's take a look at what it does. First off, it will automatically and uh, relatively uh, a little bit faster than the tier one primogel soil. The blaze bloom soil will increase uh, the rate at which things grow, uh, which is going to be even faster than regular. But it's not like crazy fast. It's just a little bit quicker. Um, so if we turn on uh, some game rule for random tick speed, uh, which is normally set to three, I'm going to set it to 30. Okay. What's going to happen is it's going to start automatically growing those crops a little bit faster, right? Basically, I'm using a cheat command to make crops grow quicker. You'll notice that it automatically harvests the crops once they're fully grown. So the Blaze Bloom Soil's ability is that it auto harvests itself. However, items that drop into the world only last for about two seconds. 
and that is not affected by the increased tick speed that I just did. So those two second delay uh, is, is, is what it is even without the speed up, right? So if I set it back to three here uh, and gave this some bone meal, and this happens on random tick. So uh, basically what happens is next time that soil happens to tick, it's going to um, trigger, trigger the auto harvest. And those items will only survive in the world for a few seconds, right? Two seconds in total. Your job is to automatically collect them. Luckily, I gave you just the block to do that. And that is one of the first machines we'll take a look at, the item collector. Now the item collector is basically a hopper. So you need to use some hoppers there and some ferrocore ingots. And because it can teleport at a distance, it's using some ender pearls and a little bit of diamond. Okay, so what this item does is uh, you can probably guess if you've played modded Minecraft before, is it is an automatic uh, collector for, for, for items. Now this can be attached to any side of a block. I'm going to happen to choose to place it on the top of this block. And you'll notice that uh, it has a, a very nice little animation there. And if we open up the UI, you'll see the item collector. Now get used to this UI because it looks very similar in a lot of other blocks in the mod. This UI will let you control the radius around which it can pick up items on the X, Y, and Z, and then also the offset for where it can pick up items. So uh, if you want to visualize this, you can click on this render area button here and you'll see the area upon which it's going to collect. So right now it will only collect the items inside that box. That's, that's not going to be great for us, right? I don't think we want that. So let's go ahead and activate this and we can, we can adjust where this box sits by using the um, radius and offset adjustments. So I'm just going to move this guy right here and then we can uh, kind of bump up the X radius and the Y radius, okay? Now any items inside this area will automatically be picked up. And if I want, I can bump the Y radius up a little bit too so that it can just kind of pick up in a decent size area. Now max size is gonna be five by five by five and the max offset can be either plus or minus nine blocks away. Um, and that, that represents the center of the area that you're doing, right? So keep that in mind. Um, but for now, we'll stick to what we had before, which is two by one by two, and that'll be that area. Now, any items that fall into the world at this point will automatically be vacuumed up into the item collector, and that runs every 20 ticks. Now, this is configurable by default. You can shrink this all the way down to every one tick, which means it'll basically pick it up instantly. But every 20 ticks, it'll pick it up uh, once a second. It'll scan the area for any items, and decide whether or not to pick them up and try to place them in the chest below. And you'll see it's already picked up some wheat and some seeds. So let's go ahead and speed up the growth ticks again for this thing. And you'll notice that he's gonna start picking up items. Now I can turn off the area render and you'll notice there's a, there's a few little particles kind of flowing into the thing. So whenever it happens to pick up an item, it'll go ahead and vacuum them up. Pretty cool. Now you'll notice that me being nearby, I happen to be picking up items. Maybe I don't like that. So I'm gonna shrink the tick speed down to once a tick. So now, pretty much, it's almost impossible that you're going to pick up items from this because the moment they, they spawn in the world, you'll see that it's getting magneted up and sent into the item collector. Now, obviously, if the item collector happens to be full, that might be a problem for you. And the items will stay and just lay on the ground. So you'll notice seeds are no longer being picked up and they're just despawning after a couple seconds. But if we start giving it more room to work within, not a problem. Now it can pick those items up once again. Uh, as you can probably assume, the slots down here are for a whitelist or deny list, so a deny or allow list and comparing of MVT. So with allow list on, it won't pick up anything unless you tell it what it can pick up. Now it's only gonna be allowed to pick up wheat and we'll let the seeds expire and dissolve. Uh, if we wanted to invert that with a deny list, now it's gonna only pick up anything but wheat so it'll pick up, for example, my blaze gold shovel, it'll pick up cobblestone, it'll pick up chests, but it won't pick up wheat. If I reverse it again and make it allow only, it won't pick up any of those things. It'll only pick up wheat. So pretty straightforward item collector functionality, uh, but that's it. Plus, I thought the particles were cool. And you know, I needed it. You know Dyer, he likes his particles. It's just, it's just a dire thing. So, you know, give it a nice wide berth. Set it to empty deny list, and we'll just pick up everything in the area. And I'm assuming you guys know what compare NBT does, uh, but just in case you don't, um, if you were to, for example, and you can drag from JEI here, if you were to tell it to pick up blaze gold swords only, um, 
if compare NBT is off, it'll pick up swords whether they're damaged or not. If compare NBT is on, it will only pick up undamaged versions of the sword. Cool. Good to go. And then you can turn off the area render. And again, if you wanted to, you could make the tick speed, you know, somewhat longer. So maybe once every one and a half seconds. It would be a nice thing if you're playing on a server not to make this too fast. That's why the default is every 20 ticks. Now I've set the game speed back to three, which is our standard game speed. And as you can see, obviously, you know, blaze bloom soil. It's not super fast, but I assure you it is faster than regular vanilla soil. It's just... It's not crazy overpowered. It's just a little bit faster. Uh, and with that, I think it's probably a good wrapping up point uh, for part one of the mod spotlight for Just Dire Things. We have a ton more to cover. Uh, there's two more tiers of tools, which by the way, have RF and Forge Energy on them. Uh, so your, your, your next tiers of tools will have uh, power instead of durability. And then uh, there's also a bunch of machines here all kinds and i'm going to quickly mouse over so you guys don't have a chance to look at what they are unless you pause the video ha 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 um and then uh just a few other gadgets and gizmos to talk about uh but for now wrapping up point so dial 20 sign off hope you guys enjoyed part one of the just dire things mod spotlight like i said a lot more cool stuff coming up in the near future these were the basic tools and items there's way more coming up all right for now hope you guys enjoyed the spotlight take it easy